golems and gargoyles. My name is TBS Guy, and welcome back to the boss designs of Dark Souls. Now, you may remember that last time we managed to make our way through this wonderful holiday destination called Sen's Fortress, which I really recommend. It's got like a four star rating on tra travel advisory, it's a great place. And we managed to make our way to the suspiciously clean city of N Orlando. So now we have to make our way back up to where the good Mr. Iron Golem used to hang out. And go to Anor Londo again, I guess. Speaking of which, I just called an Uber. They're not getting five stars, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> this cutscene was very impressive the first time I saw it. The second time around is a little bit more like... Yeah, I get it. It's a nice town. Hello, big suspiciously open area with doors on either end. Uh, oh, hello. Oh my God, is that a bell gargoyle? Is that one of those I can't aim low enough. <laughs> I genuinely can't aim low enough. Darn it. I also only have four arrows, so it's not like I'd be able to kill him. Hello, hi, 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 hi. Ah, uh, good, yes, yes, good. And who might you be? Well, you are a rare visitor. Welcome to the lost city of Anor Londo, chosen undead. If you seek Lord Grin's old keep, exit here and head straight yonder. If you are the chosen one, a revelation shall visit thee. What follows thereafter depends upon you. Well, that sounds ominous. So does yonder mean that way or does yonder mean this way? I don't know. I'm not up in my old English. I mean, you're guarding something. You're guarding something. And I kind of want that something, but I kind of don't want to. Well, there's a bonfire right over there, so okay, whatever. Seriously, though, it is just suspicious how clean this place is. Like, everywhere else, everywhere else is just covered in dirt and grime and nonsense. Everywhere else looks like garbage. Everywhere else looks like, you know, nobody's been there in a thousand years. And this place looks like they've got janitors just scrubbing every inch of it. Like, on the date. There's not even dirt on the flagstones, so I'm going to take a wild guess. Sealed by the Great Lord's power. Well, okay then. I'm gonna take a wild stab in the dark and say that maybe, maybe something screwy is up with Anno Londo. Maybe the reason why it looks so nice and pretty isn't like for honest reasons. It's not, maybe not because they have an army of invisible janitors cleaning the place. Maybe that's not what's going on. <laughs> top floor, dudes in armor, clean vistas. Anno Londo, top floor. It's kind of nice to fight a boss as a normal en enemy and feel really good about not being weak anymore. Okay. Try detour. Uh, I don't know what to do there. Oh, there's stairs over there. Oh, why would you do that to me? I want to know what you have to say, but I don't want to go up there. Wait, hang on. If I... So there's a pathway across here. So if I could climb that successfully, I might be able to... Oh, FromSoft, you bastards. Fill my heart with song. And let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, don't fall down. In other words, oh god, from soft you bastards. Okay. All right, we're not dead yet. We're not dead. <laughs> what? What the hell? What? What? 
What? What? The what? 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 Oh, no, you don't. Oh, I see you. I see you right there. So that's where you're hanging out, huh? Oh, I have to walk across that? Oh, <laughs> I control like a drunk Soviet tank with one tread not working. Eh. Uh, uh, the, ah. Hmm. Oh, okay. He, and that, yeah. <sighs> okay. Okay. All right. Yes. Let's. I just want to reclaim. I just want my souls back. It's all I want. Yeah. Ah, no, I don't, don't, come on. Okay. Nice and gentle. Nice and slow. Okay. All right, everything's fine. Everything's cool! Okay, whatever boss is on the other side of this, just kill me. Just get it over with, just do it. Okay then. Did I just make a shortcut? I hope I made a shortcut. I made a shortcut! Yay! Oh. Oh. Well, hello there, my friend. Yeah, I remember most of you guys' tricks, jerks. I remember because you killed me like 50 times and I'm over it. Gargoyle Tales, woo-hoo. Every day we're cutting up some gargoyle tales, woo-hoo! Tales of stupid gargoyles who lives on rooftops, ooh-ooh! Oh, that's a lot of them, actually. Okay, well, I have slightly more health than I did before. Hi. You're the last one. So... Just be quiet about it, would you? Thank you. Well, that didn't cost me most of my Estus flasks at all. Oh, hello. That's a bunch of stuff. Need key. Need item. Contraption does not move. Less a contraption, but more of a painting. I guess this is something to remember for later. Get over here. Come on. Come on. Here, boy. Here, boy. Okay. Were you guarding anything is the next question. Oh, hello. Is this where I'm supposed to go? Try ranged battle with whom? Ah! Ah! Why?
FromSoft needs to be thrown in prison for crimes. Oh, there you are. Yes. You've been quiet these days. Smooth summoning out there. I've Anytime been quiet. My brilliantly shining signature. Do not hesitate to call upon me. Hello. You left me with quite an impression. I would relish a chance to assist you. I'm you just really so happy to see you. With me, aren't you. If I didn't know better, I'd think you had feelings. I again. do. Oh, no. Dear me, pretend you didn't hear that. <laughs> huh. One of those is a mimic. Yep. God, they're so disturbing. Okay. Havel's armor and helm. I feel like the name Havel is something I've heard before too. Worn by Havel the Rock's warriors, carved from solid rock. Good lord, its tremendous weight is matched only by the defense it provides. Havel's warriors never flinched nor retreated from battle. Those unfortunate enough to face them were inevitably beaten to a pulp. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it just for a little bit. Just for fun. Just to see. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like stumbling and falling over than rolling. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just feeling catharsis right now. More paintings. Quite nice ones, too. And I don't suppose there's anything... I kind of want to look at these... Hey, that's... Is that? It can't be. Because it's not quite the same, but it's based on... I think this one's based on a Rembrandt painting, actually. Hey, this is Future Sky and jumping in to say that yes, indeed, this is a slightly altered version of a Rembrandt painting. It's been flipped horizontally and his beard has been edited a little bit, but this is the portrait of Nicolaes Hotz, who was a fur merchant in the 1630s in Amsterdam who had his portrait painted by Rembrandt. And it seems the other paintings in this room are also copies or direct inserts of other famous paintings, or at least some of them are. The painting of a child seems to be a direct insert of a portrait of a child named Hjop de Wilt by a painter named Dirk Dierks, and I'm definitely mispronouncing both of those names, and it is from the 1640s. The portrait of a woman is a portrait of a woman named Eva Gielwink uh, by Joachim van Sintraat, and that's from 1639. All of these are Dutch masters from the golden age of Dutch painting, and this is around the time, of course, when Rembrandt was alive, which was a massive flowering in the economic prosperity of Amsterdam, which led to a massive merchant class that had a lot of money to spend, and one of the things they liked to spend money on was paintings, particularly of each other and of themselves. These paintings served essentially as a type of uh, prestige symbol or advertising for whatever business or whatever virtues that these people wanted to project to the outside world. Now, as for the other paintings in the room, I wasn't able to identify where each of them come from. Some of them are just concept art, while others certainly look like copies or inserts of Baroque paintings, but I wasn't able to find the originals. Now, we've already talked about how Anne Orlando seems like this very clean, almost suspiciously perfect and well-preserved monument to the ancient kingdom of Gwyn. And the story of Dark Souls so far, at the very least, seems to be about restoring that ancient kingdom to glory. So it might be that these paintings are a part of the environment design meant to signal that Anne Orlando is a place that, much like the old Dutch merchants who got these paintings made specifically to advertise themselves, to show off their wealth and their prestige and their virtue, and Orlando is a little bit like that. It's a lot of show. It's a lot of projected virtue that is meant to fool outsiders into thinking a certain way about the place, but which hides perhaps a somewhat more human truth underneath, a somewhat less plastic and well-preserved truth. Or it could just be that they wanted some nice paintings to hang on the walls in this room. I mean, sometimes you can overthink things. Hi. Ow. Ah, you here. 
Let me guess. Were you repelled by the Silver Knight? Not so much, no. Don't be ashamed. Tis the fake of vanguard like you and I. I'll think of something. We can overcome this together. Yes, please come with me, please. I'm so lonely. I don't suppose you might want to help me or something? No? That's fine. That's okay. You're busy being an onion. Wait. You defeated those monsters? Fantastic. I'm saved. This knight of Catalina hereby commends you. Oh, thank you very much. As a token of my gratitude. Tiny being's ring. Gallantry entails great risk. Next time, give me a chance to come up with a plan. Hey, look at that. Right back here. Sweet. Anyway, time to attack the really very large big boys. Hopefully they don't fight that differently from their cousins. Okay. Hello, very large boy. Very extremely big large man. How are you? My name is Skyen, and I'll be your hapless victim today. Oh, boy! That's not a shield slam at all! Oh, you're large and you don't take damage. Those are bad things. Okay, let's just cheat this a little bit. You can't be worse. Whatever's in here can't be worse. What's on the other side? Oh wait, no. I think this is worse. Oh, this looks a lot worse, actually. Oh no. Oh, I know about you guys. I know about you guys. I have heard of you. Okay, so we have one very fast boy and his extremely very large problematic friend I should not be locked on right now. That's not a thing I should be doing at all. Hey, I can do damage to them. That's good, or at least to him. Ow, right in the tit, right in the facey face. Oh, he has lightning. Why does he have lightning? He shouldn't have lightning. He shouldn't have anything. A sword in his face is what he should have. Oh, you don't get hit by the big hammer. The big hammer doesn't touch you. Oh, all right, I see how it is. Oi. Ah! A dragon slayer and an executioner, huh? I can see it. I can see it. Dragon slaying, one assumes, is a game of being a little bit faster and, and being able to jump and stuff. Whereas executioning is more about just big splat, smash the hammer on the face of the guy. The music sounds really cool, but I can't focus on it at all. Oh, not good, not good. Very bad. <laughs> is it just me or is is Smo's armor flexible? Like it seems to s twist and turn with his body. Yeah, there we go. Hey, I got Orn I got Ornstein almost to half health. Okay, so we have a classic double act here. Ornstein and Smo are basically, uh, they're basically Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> it's basically what's going on. We have, we have the, the thin, agile, sort of slippery, wiry one, and then we have the big, beefy mother boy. Okay. Oh, that tracks me. Oh, that tracks me a lot, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, blocking him is not much of an option, is it? And with Ornstein having ranged attacks that he could spam at me while I'm trying to... And he has that dash thing that he does. Yeah, there it is.
that bunch. I would like that, yes. Basically, I've been trying to experiment. So I've got the elite armor set up to like an acceptable level. And then if I really can't beat Ornstein and Smau any other way, then I'll just go back to my old strategy of sort of having a relatively bad roll and some armor and a shield and being a really boring basic Dark Souls player. And if I want to be a little bit adventurous, then I have uh, <laughs> this option. Trying to beat them over the head with a very large sword and hopefully not get hit by them too much. Whether that's gonna work at all or not, I have no idea. But yeah, this is a, this is the slow ass chunky boy build. This is I'm gonna take a bunch of hits, and I'm just gonna hope that I can kind of tank it. <laughs> but I'm still I'm still just so delighted by the big chunky boy. Just. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to do it, but I feel tempted to do it in combat just because it looks so dumb. <laughs> Hello, other chunky boy and his twink friend. How are you doing? Oh, well, that did not work at all. <laughs> and I have absolutely no defense against Captain Lightning over here. I do good damage, though. Okay. Well, it's not the worst start. I could be dead already. Ow. Ow. Dead, probably. <laughs> okay. Dodged. Oh, boy. Well, I halfway dodged some of that, I guess. Hello. <clears throat> oh, would you please just stay in range? As we talked about last time, there is a clear Laurel and Hardy thing going on with Ornstein and Smau in that their character designs are very much based around being the big, slow, heavy guy, and the agile, skinny guy. And that seems to be pretty much their entire character concept is that they are that exact thing um, brought into execution as, as a boss fight. Um, which also you know, implies that they have a character dynamic of a sort, like that there is a dynamic between them as people, which I, I mean, obviously I can't say one way or the other since I don't really know much about them except that they are here. But there is, like, there is a character affinity between them because they are both designed with the same color aesthetics. Uh, they both have this, this sort of golden armor thing going on with them that places them, like, gold is always a color that's associated, well, usually it's a color that's associated with wealth, with glamour, sometimes even with purity, uh, certainly with power, and that ties in pretty well to the design of Erno Londo itself which is this, as we've talked about extensively already, this apparition of the perfect castle. It's the idealized form of what Lord Ran might be supposed to be in the Age of Fire, probably. I mean, this is just me guessing based on what little lore I've been able to absorb so far. And they kind of tie into that in that they look like the grand paladin protectors of such a fanciful magical fantasy realm. You know, kitted out in golden armor and also like very, very ceremonial armor. They are not, they don't look like just dudes in armor. They look like dudes in extremely highly personalized armor. Armor that was made only for them and was made to make them specifically look cool and powerful and to help them embody the glory of whatever whatever royalty that they're charged with defending. And I would imagine that there is a king of some sort or a queen or something hanging out somewhere in this godforsaken hellscape of a perfect plastic ruin. And to the light. But yeah, and also in, in, in the shape language of the two characters, there's a, there's a clear contrast being set up where Ornstein, fairly obvious, uh, or rather Smau, fairly obviously is very large, very round, very fat, very rotund, and also defined by rounded shapes. Ornstein is much more defined by not, not necessarily linear straight shapes or hard edges, but he certainly is more straight laced, more straight edge, as it were, than his companion. And like in the traditional dynamic, you have the big, dumb, slow guy, and you have the smart, wiry, slippery, brains of the operation leader guy. Uh, whether that dynamic is at play with the two of them, I don't know. I mean, at least in combat, they're very much acting as equals. In kicking my ass seven ways from Sunday. Okay, hello, chunky boys. You're probably very tired of seeing me coming wandering down along here. 
stealing your jobs of being the chunkiest boys in the hall, but uh, I'm gonna keep doing that for a while. And into the light. Into the light, my friend. Hey, Ornstein. Hey, how you doing? Uh, I've got a party going on over here if you want to come. It's a cool party. All the nice people are here. Celebrities? I don't know. Are there celebrities in Lord Rent? Maybe. I don't know. Who cares? You want Taylor Swift? We got Taylor Swift. We got Taylor Swift axe to your face, you jackass! This is probably stupid, but I'm gonna go for it. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Suck it! Suck it! Whoa! Okay! okay. Wow, that's a little cold. Oh, he's got he's got a lightning hammer now. The hammer has lightning in it. Did he just steal the lightning from the other guy? Oh, that's not good. That's bad. That's very bad. Okay, he can also do chunky lightning butt stomp. That's a thing he can do. Cause ah, yeah. Cause I don't know what to do about that bit. Let's try a very alternative strategy. Da ba da ba da ba 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 Okay, well, that was worth it. That was worth it. That was 110% worth. I just need one hit on this f No, you bastard, Ornstein! Oh, got him! Got him! Got him! Got him! Got him! I 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 got him! He goes down. Oh, thank God. Ah! Ah! Ha ha ha! Oh, I hope he doesn't get the weird superpowers from his friend. Oh, he gets weird superpowers from his friend! Well, okay, so it's not like beating Smau first is making us less troublesome. At all. Uh, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm definitely dead. I'm not dead. I'm almost dead. I'm probably dead. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, I think... Let's try and summon Solaire. To help us out. And hopefully not get him killed. Tell me he's not trying to fight them. Oh, of course he is. Okay. So, Solaire, anytime you want to get in here, that'll be lovely. But the question is whether that's gonna be, like, whether Solaire is gonna have the health, enough health to help me with, uh, Ornstein once Smau is dead. God, but that's the surprise. You can really see it here when we get this close-up on him. Just how much more spiky, how much more angular, how much more dense with with the uh, etch shapes that uh, that Ornstein is than his counterpart. Okay, Solaire, just try not to die. Maybe tank a hit for me or something. Oh, that's the lightning butt stomp. Don't do that. Ah, uh, range. Ah! He did it again. Well, Solaire's probably gonna go down. Oh! I forgot I can't block that. I can't block that at all. 
Yes, yeah, Solaire was vanquished. I expected that. So now it's just you and me, buddy. Ah, damn it! I meant to dodge that. I meant to. I didn't, but I meant to. That bullshit spell. Why do you still have that bullshit spell? You got so much other bullshit, you should at least lose the bullshit spell. Well, okay. We are within striking distance of killing him. This is usually when it all goes wrong. Because I don't have enough stamina to do anything. Hmm. Come on! One more hit! Not now, not now, not now. Oh, not good. I need one hit on your ass. I need one hit. But I'm taking so much damage trying to get it. I'm being too aggressive. In situations when I can't be aggressive. Oh, come on! What the hell was that? Ah! God damn you! 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 First try! <laughs> So we've got Titty Lady, and we've got someone I have to assume is Gwyn, and then we have an empty space, as though someone was kind of supposed to be there, but is mysteriously missing for unknown reasons. Hmm. Hmm. Please tell me there's no enemies up here. That's a bonfire! That's a bonfire! That's a bonfire right there. That's a bonfire. Oh, that's a bonfire. Thank God. Bonfire. Yes, very good. Good bonfire. I like you. Okay. So. Souls, then. Uh, na, 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 na. Soul of Ornstein, dragon slayer and knight who guards the cathedral in the forsaken city of Anorlando. Special beings of special souls. Gwyn granted this soul to his foremost trusted knights. Interesting. For the moment, let's talk about Ornstein and Smao. That double act structure is, is a, a proper classic in in character design. It's, it goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. You can, you can find that kind of character design, that kind of duo, like in folk stories from God knows how many years ago. Uh, so that's like that's a really, really classic dynamic of characters between them. Although, looking at the way they behaved in the cutscenes, I would say that the relationship between them is a little bit not what you would expect, whereas Smao reacts to his friend being killed by just smashing him to pieces and stealing his lightning powers. Ornstein reacts by putting, you know, a, a sort of tentative, furtive hand on the chest of his fallen friend and going, I shall become the chunky one now, and growing really, really large. You know, that, that hints at something interesting, like that there, that there may have been a, a kind of antagonism between them or something like that, but that's not really readable in their character design so much. Let's just see what this amazing chest is. Well, howdy doody there. How are you doing? You're very big. I, I, that's, that's a large lady. She's got big features. I'll kneel in a second, lady, but for the moment, I just need to look at your character design. So we've seen her already as a statue, but I get the feeling that there's a reason why they gave her that ridiculous boob window in her robes. Like, she's posed to present her breasts and her face, she's, she's designed to present it. Like, they really want you to be seduced by this. There's definitely a character design element of seduction going on here. Especially in a game that's so traditionalist with its character designs. Like, Dark Souls plays straight into the dark European fantasy. Like, it doesn't even 
bother pretending not to be dark European fantasy. And it plays into all of the character design tropes of dark European fantasy, which means we've seen other female characters in the game, like the Fire Keepers, uh, like that priestess who was praying at Firelink Shrine, and uh, even the, the Fire Keeper here at Anor Londo, who were absolutely not sexualized at all. Like, there's really nothing sexualized about almost any other character in this game at all. But this lady right here is not only sexualized, she's sexualized in such a blatantly obvious way. Like, she's so blatantly unlike anything else in terms of a character design in this game that I can't help but feel that something is going on. It could just be because she's like a god or something. Is she a spirit or a god or... Well, I guess we'll find out. Oh, okay. Since the day Her lips don't move. You may now warp between bonf- Oh! Oh, that's good! That's not how you s use the F ending. That's not how you do it either. Oh. So, the overarching story of the game so far has been that I am the air quotes chosen one, chosen undead, chosen whatever, and I shall succeed Fire Lord Gwyn, blah blah, fire of the world, rekindle, yada yada, make things not be bad anymore. But I feel a little bit like I'm being railroaded here. Like, again, as I talked about with the seduction narrative, like with the seduction angle on the character, she's clearly meant to be you know, a seductive character design. And then she starts flattering me. Like, she's flattering me a lot by, though, you're the chosen one, you'll, and you'll be the one who does the glorious, good, nice things in the world and stuff. Which, I'm a little bit suspicious of, to be honest. Like, it feels a little bit like she's trying to railroad me into doing something that serves her interests rather than mine. And I don't know about that, lady. Guess we'll find out. Let's go back to Firelink Shrine. So I'm just gonna go listen to Kingseeker Frampt, because presumably he'll have something more to say. Although I'd really prefer not to have to talk to him. Hi. Heavens, you have done it. You have retrieved the Lord Vessel. Yes. After a thousand years, it is you. It is really you. It sure. Oh, don't make that noise. Please don't make those noises. <laughs> Forgive me. I really should calm down. Now, let us take that vessel on a journey. Oh, Assume those teeth. that you are ready. Now, be still. What? Oh, I don't like this at all. Oh, I don't like this at all! Oh, <laughs> oh that's not nice. Oh. oh, this is just getting worse all the time. Oh. oh, he's upside down now. That's not an this improvement. This is the fire link chamber for the successor of Lord Wynn. Now, place the Lord Vessel on the altar. Oh, that's, that's... He's even more disturbing now! Okay, then. I'll do that, I suppose. How the hell was I carrying that around? That's a big vessel. I guess I'm carrying it in the same place that I stuff the 400 weapons I've got on me.
Neat. Oh, it dispels those. So they're presumably there's progression gated behind them. I don't remember that one. Well, I do remember that one. I think I... Didn't I see it when I was getting my ass beat by the ceaseless discharge? Would you like to explain what just... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why are you so ugly? Very well. As King Seeker, I shall now instruct you... <laughs> it's even worse now! ...in your next task. To achieve your fate, fill the vessel with powerful souls... He's so much worse now. ...to the great soul of wind. Scarce few possess such brilliant souls. Grave Lord Nito, the Witch of Isolith, the four kings of New Londo, who inherited the shards of Gwyn's soul, and Lord Gwyn's former confidant, Seath the Scaleless. All of their souls are required to satiate the Lord Vessel. Are you ready? Then we shall return. No! No, 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 no! Oh, God! Oh, no. Oh, no. Couldn't I just ride on your back or something? Ugh. Ah. <laughs> oh. I'll be happy if I never have to do that ever again. Uh. Okay, so n with... We have done what we set out to do. We have destroyed the bosses with a little bit of help from some jolly cooperation. And I think I'm going to pass it over to Future Sky now, who's going to talk a little bit about Ornstein and Smau, but perhaps also do a little bit more story analysis. Try and, try and figure out a little bit more about what's actually going on here. Because I'm beginning to get really suspicious of this Chosen One business. So over to you, Future Sky. Well, thank you very much, Pascaline. Yes, indeed, let us talk a little bit about Ornstein and Smau, and then do a little bit of a lore, let's say, wrap-up on what the story of the game has turned out to be so far. As for Ornstein and Smau, I think we managed to cover the majority of what's interesting about their character design while actually playing the game. That the classic big guy, small guy double act using completely distinct shape languages in order to enhance and create the contrast between them. With Smau defined entirely by round and soft shapes and Ornstein being an entire mess of spikes and edges and points. We also did touch briefly on their color scheme, which is, well, they have just one color between them. Basically, they are various shades of golden brown, with Ornstein sporting a red plume coming out of his head, giving him a tiny little flare of color. But that relative lack of color differentiation does create a literally uniform look between them. It associates them, and it also associates them with the gold, the color of the sun, and the very orange-tinted aesthetic that generally dominates an Orlando. Now, one minor thing I want to note is that there's a very long, very trite, and sometimes rather toxic history of associating evil with fatness. And this is a trope that's employed a lot of times in fantasy and sci-fi. Think of someone like Jabba the Hutt, for example, where being fat, being bloated, being gluttonous, being, you know, excessive is used as markers of a kind of moral failing. And while I don't understand fully the relationship between Ornstein and Smau, or indeed what their particular backstories are, it is pretty clear in the cutscenes when Ornstein falls, Smau smashes him with a hammer, showing absolutely no regards to his fallen compatriots, whereas when, Orn uh, when Smau falls, Ornstein treats him with at least some modicum of respect before absorbing his powers. As we talked about with Guinevere, Dark Souls is a game that plays dark European fantasy tropes entirely straight, and this is one of the ones that's been imported directly. And this is just a personal note, but I'm kind of tired of that particular trope because it reinforces some really ugly attitudes towards people's body shapes, and this has absolutely nothing to do with fitness and everything to do with how we in media code various kinds of bodies, codes various kinds of character designs as being more good, more evil, more virtuous, and more sinful. And if you're thinking, what could possibly be so bad about coding one particular body type for a certain set of characteristics in media? Well, think about what can happen when the thing about the body that is coded good or evil is the skin color. Which is not to say that those two things are equivalent, just that they are problems for similar reasons and they can lead to bad outcomes for similar reasons, and therefore should be approached critically. 
Anyway, enough about Ornstein and Smau. Let's talk a little bit about the overarching story of Dark Souls, because as I've mentioned many, many times during the episode itself, I am starting to get really suspicious of this whole chosen undead business. First of all, because the character designs of characters like Guinevere and Frampt are starting to make me really suspicious of why they are so insistent that I must follow my fate, but also because... Wh how, wh what? fate exactly? Where did that fate idea even come from? Because as I started the game, I am just an undead rotting in the undead asylum when a random act of chance sets me free. A guy up above drops a corpse down into my cell that he's presumably just killed that happens to carry a key that I need. I'm not really sure that the guy meant to free me specifically, or even if he did, it just seemed to be a random act of kindness. But then we encounter the guy lying half dead in a cell, illuminated illuminated by light, and he's the one who tells me about this suspiciously specific proverb that his family has about the fate of the undead and such, and he's the one who gives me the Estes flasks, which is frankly the only goddamn thing that allows me to survive as long as I do, and when I go to ring the bells, I am going in his place. If anyone was chosen, if anyone had a particular fate, surely it was the dude with the nice armor and the long family lineage and the special proverb handed down through generations in his family detailing what must be done in order to save the world from the evil of the dark that's coming or whatever the case may be. And so everybody's starting to call me the chosen undead because I happened to succeed at ringing a couple of bells feels a lot less like this was my predestined quest from the start and more like some people see, hey, that guy's pretty capable. He seems to be able to do the thing that we need him to do in order to preserve the kingdom. So let's just call him the chosen undead and send him out on a massive killing spree all across the kingdom to murder everybody whose power stands in the way of the restoration of the kingdom of Lordran. And see, that's the second part of it. The story so far, at least insofar as I can make out, has to do with this fallen, decaying kingdom that is desperately clinging on to life. And besides the main mechanic of the game being killing other creatures to take their souls to use that to empower yourself, it also kind of seems that maybe that's what Lord Ran is doing. That the kingdom, the institution of, 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 the, of the Age of Fire itself is, it takes souls, it takes the essence of other creatures, it kills and murders and consumes in order to perpetuate itself, and that is literally what I'm being tasked with, especially by Frampt, is to go out, find these powerful sources of energy, steal them by force, and then use them to power back up the kingdom, because the kingdom, Lordran, this state of things, this age of fire, must continue. And I'm never really given any incentive to care about that very much. Like, the game never goes out of its way to show me how good and how wonderful things would be if we could only get Lordran back to its pristine, glorious state. That would be a wonderful thing for everybody. It's, happiness would reign across the land, everything would be good and nice and wonderful. Like, the children would have candy, and, uh, you know, orphans would have parents, and it's just wonderful. None of that is ever really shown to me. All I get to do is stalk through the ruins of a destroyed society, and then, once I get to and Orlando, I get to see a pristine version of that, but one that is entirely devoid of people, but populated by edifices, by monuments, by buildings, by these grand statues to the glory of the ruler, but not a single hint of what would be good about it for anyone other than the people who have a material interest in Lordran being restored to power and glory. Now, that's not to say that I think that returning to the Age of Darkness would be a good thing necessarily within the lore of the game, but even in the intro cinematic, it's made pretty clear that the whole thing about the fire is that it sprung up, it exists for a while, and then it burns itself out. It is not, as it were, air quotes, the natural state of things. The fire is a temporary affair, and like most fires, well, you can keep it burning, but only if you feed it more fuel. And then the question is, well, what kind of fuel feeds a fire like that? And the answer seems to be living souls. And I may be over-interpreting things a little bit, but generally, the people who are on the side of human sacrifice to perpetuate the power structure are not on the side of good? And there is, of course, also, if like if I'm right about any of this, then, of, then Dark Souls comes across as a rather powerful criticism of the idea of empire. And indeed, the idea of any hierarchical power structures at all, with fire 
came disparity and that disparity created a kingdom that burns its own citizens as fuel for its continued existence. Except, of course, it's not the citizens that I am destroying in order to reignite the fire. I am destroying all the kings and lords of this broken down, ruined Lord Rain. I'm taking their power from them and feeding it to the fire to restore the kingdom to glory. So I don't know that there is necessarily a straight, you know, materialist criticism of feudal power structures or imperialism hidden within Dark Souls. But I'm saying that it might be possible to make one, depending on what kinds of lore are going to be revealed down the line and what kind of readings that it can support. Anyway, thank you very much for watching another episode of The Boss Designs of Dark Souls. It only took me a year, but I finally created an intro for the show. I hope you liked that one. Uh, you can like, subscribe, comment, yada yada, YouTube stuff. That's all very helpful. If you want to support the channel directly, there is Patreon, where you can do a monthly subscription of any dollar amount that you're willing and able to give. Uh, if you want to tip me one time, there's a donation link down in the description. Or you can use Coffee, which is a service where you can tip me in like increments of, of like what, what it costs to buy a, a cup of coffee. $3 is what they've set it to. Those are one-time tips to say, hey, thumbs up, good job on the thing you did. And uh, this series especially is not really the big money maker in terms of advertising so it is really through support uh directly through patreon through donations and stuff like that that i'm able to make videos like this so all of the people who have helped me make this thing so far thank you very much if you're not interested or willing to do any of that or able to do any of that of course it's completely fine i'm just happy that you have watched this video at all if you haven't enjoyed the video, of course, well, that's completely fine, and down below there is a means for you to express that dissatisfaction. Go down there and smash that dislike button. Smash it. Smash it. Destroy it! Break it! Take its power for yourself! Make yourself the lord of dislikes and rule forever over this dark kingdom of YouTube! Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>